Hello, welcome to part 4 of our tic-tac-toe video. So here we are using a Windows form application and trying to build the tic-tac-toe. So last time we had added some logic where you can click on the forms and it changes the image and we are also maintaining a data structure so we also wrote a function such that whatever is defined in this two-dimensional data structure that get reflected in the board and we are keeping the logic of the board separate from the user interface uh, this is called the separation of concern principle all right so let's see where we left last time so here we ask for the name of player uh, and here if we are clicking we also added a check so that if the board is um, already occupied and some other user has played you cannot click on that again so we have only added this capability in five uh, of the cells and then you can add that later oh look at that chat wins all right Oh, chat, sorry, chat pins was there in the beginning. <laughs> I was like, I didn't add that logic. How did that come up? All right, now let's do one thing. Uh, what we are seeing here is we are pressing X and zero. But if I press X, the next move can only be a zero. So we need to add that logic in place. And again, because we have already separated out the UI from the logic, the only changes we need to do is in the logic. So this is the main function get updated board which makes change to a state. And we have also added a check here this if row is less than zero uh, or column is less than zero and column is less than zero it will return the board. So this is useful if we only want to get the status of the board without making any change. And this is where the change is being made. Now we need to figure out what changes to do. And how do we toggle between those changes? Now, do remember that tic-tac-toe only allows two uh, players, right? So let's add another flag here. Player, let's call it a Boolean. And simply just call it is player one move. And if we'll initialize this value of, uh, we can actually do this in the initialize board. That will make it more sense. So we'll say is player one move is equal to true all right now we go down here and see if a is player one move is equal to true by the way for boolean types you don't need to give this condition you can also simply use this because remember the if clause itself is a boolean statement but just for clarity let's just add this if player one is equal to true then now remember, in a tic-tac-toe game, we have specified that the player one move should always be a zero. So what we do is set the board to zero, else we will set it to X. And remember in the UI, we have the logic that changes uh, the picture based on X or O which is looking like a zero here but that's actually an O let's go back now here's the thing we have player one has moved player one is equal to true right after this move is played we need to toggle player one move we have to set it to if the player one move is equal to true we have to set it to false if player one move is false we have to set it to true so you can do an if then else condition to do it but an easier way to do that is simply put not or we can do is player now this symbol here represents the not move and since player one move is a boolean variable which means it can only have true and false values this flag uh, or this operator here will simply reverse whether whatever the value player one move has so if player one move was true this will convert it to false if player one move was false, it will convert it to true. So let's put a breakpoint and see how this works. So we go ahead. All right, we are here. 
so we have already played the play one move see play one move was true because we see we have set this to true here now let's go to the next line so after this line is executed this should change to false it's become false and next time we play we will resume continue see it came as zero now if you press here play or move is false because last time we played it we converted it to a false after this is done it will again move to true so this will keep on toggling so let's continue so now it should place an x there and if i click here again let's just remove the breakpoint now it will place a zero now if i try to click here it's not going to allow it because we have already added logic for that so as you can see if you're adding generic logic your program automatically expands and you don't need to add special conditions every time you make a change so here there should be an x and there should be a zero so our toggling logic is working very well so we have had a basic game now right we we can uh, see uh, if we click on the boards it automatically toggles now obviously if I was first player I'll click to make an O here but remember we haven't added the logic here so we leave it as is and just focus on these five boxes so now how do you determine if the game has ended so let's add another function in a class which says check board and this will determine if the game has ended or not so obviously the game ends if there's no oh, we should actually return it uh, a boolean value so let's add a logic here um, so sorry I mean adding a comment here and usually I recommend to use these three slashes to add the comment rather than two because Visual Studio automatically builds an XML way to add comments and there's other software out there that can extract these comments and build a document automatically out of your code but anyway we haven't seen that so let's not delve into much this returns true if game has ended so what is the easiest condition that the game has ended one easy way to check if there is no more free space or there's no no board is uh, available to make a move so we just execute a standard loop for each row and column so here what we are doing is going through every cell and seeing if that is blank but of course we are assigning the value here and we need to check if board row comma one is blank then we simply return false right I mean there's no point going further we know the game has not ended so we can just add a checks if uh, So here we are returning a false if you find any board that is available to play and if every board is full then we return a true which means the game has actually ended now obviously we are not going to reach this condition based on the form we have because we haven't added the logic in other uh, cells so what is the another way where the game can end is if one of the player wins so ideally this check here should be at the end first you should now see if some player has won or not so we'll copy this loop again Uh, 
inside this loop. Remove this bag. All right. So how do we check now if the game has actually? has actually ended or not so let me paste that back so now we are seeing uh, we are going iterating through every row and column and now how do we check if a game has ended so let's go back and look at a tic-tac-toe board so game ends when you have the same character either O or X in any of the columns or any of the rows or diagonally so there are three, one, two, three for the rows, one, two, three for the columns and two diagonals. So there are eight ways in which the game can end. And now we need to check for each one of those eight ways. But it's pretty straightforward because we'll be doing it inside a loop. So if, let's check it, if, uh, what was the board name? Board I row comma i column now we are first checking the rows now let's actually do the rows first so if board i row comma i column is equal to So here actually, you know, if we run a loop, we'll have to take care of a little bit more things. So let's do this. Let's actually just hard code this and see if we can convert this to a loop later on. So I'm going to remove this code here for the I row and column. And then see if board I row, and let's give absolute numbers now. So we are checking So we are only specifying two conditions in each if statement. So what I'm going to do, add another one. If board zero comma one is equal to board zero comma three, which means somebody has one. Let me actually fix this. So let's see what we are doing here, right? We are saying if board zero comma one Actually, so this should be 0, 0, because we are using a 0-based index. So we are saying if board 0, 0 is equal to 0, 1. So board 0, 0 is this, 0, 1 is this. So we are saying if this is equal to this, then do the second check, which is if this is equal to this, which means that somebody has 1. So now we are going to return the value true. So we are. Th this is a check for only uh, this is a check only for row zero. You know we are keeping the row same. Check each row. Actually, this should be each check. Now let's do it for the second row. So second row means we are seeing if uh, this, this, and this are the same. So we will do one comma zero, 
0.1 alright now we have added this logic now we have to go back and call this function called check board so we are in this function where uh, we call draw board and every time people make a move anytime we click on this we call the function draw board and we say get updated board so picture board only calls the update board function so this is where all the action is happening now we should also do uh, if checked uh, what is the main board the check board is equal to true which means the game has ended just right now we'll simply issue a message box game has ended um, giving the VB if you do too much VB programming you get confused with the message boxes all right now let's run this so remember we have added some checks for this row and this row so let's try this row first so I'm going to play a zero here oops that is not correct why has the game ended uh, so we'll have to add a breakpoint let's do this here uh, I can actually see why the game ended passwords let's go and check this because this condition will get satisfied as the board is empty so we need to add a condition here we need to make sure we are not comparing blanks <laughs> when the board is empty so only do this check when this is not blank let's add a if condition here we actually didn't add a separate flag even though it's not needed as the next line is automatically added to the if we still added that just for clarity now let's do the check for board 1 comma 0 same logic actually I can just copy this whole thing here that will make it a little bit easier and in the next video I'll show you how we'll convert this to a loop otherwise this will be too many lines of code because we are comparing one all right now let's see so I click 0 working perfectly fine I'm going to make an X here I'm going to do an zero here and I'm going to click an X here and when I click a zero game has ended because somebody has won so the logic is in place now we haven't added the logic or the click logic for these cells here so there's no use trying this move here now let's see if I move one of the X's here in which case this can uh, condition should fail because it will be a 0 x 0 so they are not in the same row we don't have the same characters in the same row so the game should continue and we should not get that message let's check that 0 x and I'm going to do a 0 here and a x here see the game still continues so our logic is working fine All right, I'm going to halt here and in next part of this video we are going to see how we can put this function inside a loop and then how we can add checks for the board state.